So there's a lot of games here that had to do with Paradox Development Studio uh, and uh, one of two new expansions that were announced at Paradox Convention this year was uh, Heart of Darkness for Victoria 2 and you're returning to Victoria 2 that was a little bit of a while ago that you did a house divided. Uh, wh why did you feel uh, you wanted to return to uh, Victoria 2? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, there's a lo lot of people on the dev team that uh, really like working with Victoria 2 and they keep coming up with good ideas and and we also have a, a large forum or community for Victoria 2 that they are eager for more content for the game and we gather a bunch of really cool ideas for it and then we started the development of a new expansion last year. <laughs> so Heart of Darkness, what's what's with this title? Why why did you go with that sort of literary reference? Uh, we wanted a, a game with me mechanics and stuff that are focused on the colonial period, 1880 forward with all the concepts out of it and we thought uh, colonialism is not just uh, glory for your country and uh, resources and making yourself powerful. There's downside to colonialism as well and uh, the book Heart of Darkness that we kind of like refer to in the title is one of those books about the pure evilness mm. that can come out from human greed. But, but in, in this, this kind of strategy game, sort of dominating another nation and making them your sort of colony, sort of is like a goal and a good thing. Sort of, so how do you sort of bring out that, that darkness into, in terms of like the gameplay? Oh, uh, it's not really that immediately emergent on that but there are that's more of like a subdued thing and it's not really a game mechanic because that f would be a little bit un uncomfortable i think but uh, but there is that tone to it maybe yeah it's not just making yourself more powerful there is not really a it's it's not really good so, so you spoke about the mechanics that sort of the colonization uh, and sort of bringing it to Africa and all that stuff. Wh wh what kind of mechanics are you adding to to sort of facilitate this this aspect? Uh, there's two very interesting things. First of all, there's a new colonization mechanic where you s where, where you like do different actions to create your colonies, to create conflicts over your colonies, not just plunking down a marker saying we want the colony there. But what's most important uh, feature-wise is really what we would call the crisis system. Uh, a crisis is something you do not when you're great power but what other countries do. A crisis is you plunk down or you like for example Greece, they, they can say that okay um, we, we are this small nation but there's a bunch of Greek speakers in Turkey um, there should be a crisis or uh, we should have a movement there for unification of the g of, of the Greeks. Then uh, you try to gather up support from a great power and as soon as you got the support and the flashpoints uh, temperature grows high enough you get an international crisis. Um, uh, all of this ties into colonial expansion as well but when there's a crisis um, the uh, all the great powers, all eight of them, has to eventually pick a side over it. Um, uh, if you don't pick a side when the temperature goes maximum, your country loses a lot of prestige. Mm. Uh, but if you're on also on a side that that eventually backs down, you also lose prestige. But if um, the ones, other ones, of course, gain prestige and the result of the crisis when we like uh, Greek independence or the Moroccan uh, control um, but also if no, no no side backs down and the temperature goes high and en high enough you turn into a great war mm. it's kind of like what happens in history with mm. World War one all right so that that makes it sounds a little bit like because when you hear about sort of a con colonial uh, um, emphasis, then you sort of think, well, I is there anything fun to do for the, the smaller states? Yeah. 
but that sort of adds a dimension where it's it, there's a lot of meaning to to those as well. Yeah, that was one of the main goals with this expansion is that uh, in Victoria too and with House Divided, it's always been that the great powers have have the most fun and becoming a great power is the goal in itself. And some countries have like no chance of becoming one unless they're very good at exploiting. So that's why we uh, have done that mechanic and other focus on making sure that being a non-greater power you can affect the world and have fun playing. So, mm. so in, in terms of scope, and this is something I return to because you bring out so many expansions, what, what kind of scope are we looking at with, with Heart of Dar Darkness? Standard Paradox expansion like House Divided, For the Motherland, Finest Hour, Divine Wind, etc. Mm. It's a big, huge expansion. All right, and and what's the the time plan ahead? Uh, it's r actually rather close to release. I think it's going out in March, so will be a very high uh, campaign uh, now with uh, lots of information coming out in the next two months before release. All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thank you.